Lesson 2.1, Transformations of Quadratic Functions. How do you describe and write transformations of quadratic functions? So the problem we're given. Let the graph of g be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 and a reflection in the x-axis, followed by a translation 3 units down of this parent function here. It's the quadratic function. Write the rule for g and identify the vertex. If we were in chapter one, we had a method for solving this using chapter one. We now have a method on how to solve this using our chapter two skills. So we're gonna do it both ways. So the very first, if this were chapter one, we would have had to identify the three different transformations it told us to do. So the very first thing it said to do was to have a vertical stretch by a factor of two. It then told us to have a reflection across the x-axis. It then told us to translate three units down. So we have three different steps we need to do. Step one told me to vertically stretch first. Step two said to do a reflection. And then step three said to move down. So using our chapter one skills to the parent, we're going to start with the f of x parent function. And then we have three different transformations we need to do. Transformation number one, so to do a vertical stretch by a factor of two. We know vertically stretching is an outside multiply move and vertical stays exactly as it was. So on the outside, we are going to multiply by two. That is the first thing that we need to do. Then it said to reflect across the x-axis, so coming further down our paper. The second move that we need to do is reflect across the x. What does that mean? That's also an outside move, and that means that on the outside that we need to multiply by a negative 1. The last move was down 3. What does that mean? That means on the outside that I am supposed to be subtracting 3. These are the three different moves that we need to do in order with the parent function. So let's go ahead and do those. So if on the outside I was multiplying by 2, he's not our last move. I cannot name him G like the problem told us to name him. So I'm going to name him H. On the outside, I'm supposed to multiply by 2. So here is me on the outside of the entire parent function multiplying it by 2. So my H of X is 2 times X squared is 2X squared. So this is after our first move. The second move said on the outside I need to multiply by negative 1. He's not my last one either. So this move is going to be called B. On the outside I am multiplying the entire problem I just solved by negative 1. So negative 1 times 2x squared, the end of this step is a negative 2x squared. He is not our last one. We have another step that we have to do to this problem. So he is our final step. We can finally call him G. But what am I doing to the problem I just finished? On the outside of it, I needed to subtract 3. So the problem I literally just finished solving on the outside, you told me to subtract 3. So if I was to simplify this, I now have a negative 2x squared minus 3. This is not in vertex form. Let's put it into vertex form. There was no inside move. So you're subtracting nothing. This is our inside move. So these are the same answer. This one is in vertex form, and this is just in standard form. So these are the same exact answer. From here, we're more easily now able to identify the vertex like the problem tells us to. It is the coordinate point H, I'm subtracting 0, and K, I am supposed to be adding something here. So this is a negative 3. So it was adding a negative 3. So this is my vertex using chapter 1. Now let's go ahead and solve this problem from start to finish using chapter 2. So pretending we didn't know our chapter 1 and we wanted to solve it using our chapter 2 skills. I see that the very first thing that it wants me to do is not only vertically stretch, which is an outside multiply move, it's also a reflect across the x, which is also an outside move. Both of these are outside multiply jobs. If both outside multiply jobs, they both affect the a. So step one and two, both affect A. They're both A. A vertical stretch by two said multiply by two. He said to multiply by one. So on the outside, we are multiplying by both the two and the negative one, 
which meant my A is supposed to be a negative 2. Step 3 is just a move down. Well, we know that moving down affected our vertex, and the down was our K, which meant I now have a K of minus 3, because down 3 is where negative 3 lives. So from here, because that's, those are the only three moves, I know my vertex is a coordinate point 0, negative 3, because I had to go down 3, but I didn't have any overs. I have an A, I have a K, and I just discovered my H which means I can do vertex form. So f of x equals, vertex form is a, parentheses, x minus h squared, plus k. So I know that my a is a negative 2. So, oh, they want me to call it g. So here's g of x. My a is now a negative 2. I reflected and vertically changed. I had no move rights or lefts, so I had no move rights or lefts but I did go down three, so I have a minus three. You will notice that this is the exact same answer we got using the chapter one as well. So we solved this problem using two different methods. When should you use which method? So the chapter one method, you should always use this one when the problem they're telling you to use is not the parent. So the chapter one method is the prime method to use when the original F that they give you to try and work with is not the parent. This is the one you should use. The vertex form chapter two method, this will only work if the one they give you is the parent. So let's go ahead and do a couple of practice problems together. So our first word problem, let the graph of G be a vertical shrink by a half. So I have my first transformation. Then it wants me to do a translation two units up of the parent function. So this is the parent. And we only have two changes, a vertical shrink and a translation up. Because it was the parent function, we could actually use the chapter two skills that we did. So we need to call it G. And it asks us to identify our vertex. So the vertical shrink all affects A. Vertical stays exactly the way that it is. So I know that my A needs to be a half. There is no other vertical happening. There is no other outside multiply happening. So A is done. So if I was moving up, up and down affects my K. So this tells me what my new K is. My K told me to go up two. So my K is a positive two. Those are the only two movements that I have. I was only told to go up. Up is the Y part, so I know my Y is 2. I was not told at all to go left or right, which meant my X is still a 0. So here's my vertex. I found an A, and I found my K. I found my H in the fact that there was no other change. So I now need to come up with vertex form. So here is my G. Vertex is A in the parentheses X minus H squared plus K. You said my a was a half, so my g of x is a one-half. x minus my h is a zero squared plus my k is a two. You could leave it like this. It's in vertex form, nice and easy to see. You could also simplify this. So we have g of x being a one-half. x minus zero is just x, so this is x squared plus two. Both of these are the solution. One's in vertex form, one is the simplified version. And the problem asked us to find our vertex. There is our vertex. So we are done. Okay, so our next problem. Let the graph of G be a translation. They give us our first move. We have three to the right. Then it tells us to make sure that we also go two up. Then it tells us to have a reflection across the Y axis. And they give us a F that is not the parent. Because he is not the parent, we have to use the chapter one method. So step number one, it told us to go to the right three. If we're to the right three, this is an inside subtract three. So he is not my last step, so I cannot call him G yet. I'm gonna go ahead and call him H. It said on the inside where X is subtract three. Well, I notice I have X in two different spots. That means each of these x's need to have a minus 3. So that x 
Here is his minus 3. The exponent has to go on the outside, so this is now an inside minus 3. That's him. Minus 5. Now that x needs to have an inside minus 3 as well. So step number 1 said to go to the right 3. Right 3 said to go inside. Here's my inside. Subtract 3 from each. So here is my new problem. Now, step two, said to go up two units. Going up two is an outside add two. I am not done. He is not my last one. We have a third step to do. So I cannot call him G. We're going to call him B. And B said on the outside of this problem, I need to add two. So here is the problem that I just found all by itself. And on the outside of him, I needed to add 2. So there is my B. Now, I first actually need to figure out what is all of this. So I can figure out what B really is and how does this add 2 change it. So I need to do whatever x minus 3 to the second power is. So that meant that I had the parenthesis x minus 3 twice. That's what the second power means. This is just a distribution, so I have a minus 5x plus 15. And at the end of all of this, I'm supposed to add 2. So at the end of all of this, I needed to add 2. So what is b of x? I need to distribute these two parentheses. If you remember from Algebra 1, it's x times x, which is an x squared. x times a negative 3, which is a minus 3x negative 3 times x, which is a minus 3x, negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. So I just distributed these two parentheses. This is still a minus 5x. Instead of writing plus 15 plus 2, I'm just going to write plus 17. So what do I really have so far with b? I have x squared minus 11x's, 26. So far at the end of step 1 and step 2, this is my quadratic function. I have a step three that I now need to do. I need to reflect across the y-axis. Reflecting across the y-axis is an inside multiply by negative one move, which meant on the inside of all these x's, I need to have a negative one. This is our last move, so he can officially finally be called g. Inside this x, so here's inside that x, I multiply by the negative, minus 11, well, there's an x, so now that x needs to be put on the inside, and he's multiplied by a negative 1x. There is no x connected to him, so he stays as he is. So what is g of x? I have a negative x times a negative x, because that's what the squared means. So negative x times negative x is an x squared. Negative 11 times a negative x is a positive 11x, and there is nothing to the positive 26. This is our g. We've done all three moves, and all it asked was to write the rule for g. It did not ask for the vertex, so we are done. Our last problem. Let the graph of g be translation four units up, so that is our first change, followed by a horizontal shrink by a factor of one-third. He's changed number two, and it gives us a function that is not the parent. If it is not the parent, that means we have to use our chapter one skills. So the very first step it told us to do, it said to go to the left 4. If you remember, a left move was an inside move. And if I wanted to go to the left, I needed to add 4. He's not my last move, so I cannot call him G like they told me to. So I'm going to call him H. And you sit on the inside add 4, which means where these X's are, the X's are now on the insides. And I need to add 4 now where those X's live. This x also now needs to be put on the inside, and he needs to have an added 4. This is the end of my h. So what I need to do first is figure out what is this really? What do I actually have? So this is what I have at the end of step 1. I have a step two that I need to do. This is a horizontal shrink. Horizontal shrinks are inside moves, and on the inside, we are supposed to multiply, and because it's horizontal, which remember, this needs to be the reciprocal. You need to flip it, so it's not one-third anymore, it is now three. 
So on the inside, we are supposed to multiply the X's by three. He's our last move. So we could actually name him G. We are working with this problem. Inside this X, he needs to have a multiplied by three. Inside this X, he needs to now have a multiplied by three. He doesn't have an X, so he doesn't get an inside at all. So this is me taking these X's and now multiplying the X's on the inside by threes. So what do we really have now? So this is our final answer. You could not solve this using the chapter two method because this is not the parent. You can't do it with the parent function. So you had to use the method that we did in chapter one, each baby step at a time.